phone rang and it was Mrs. Brand. And she said, Judge Brand just called me from Washington, D.C. and he wants you to go to Germany with him as his court reporter. My, my job when I got over there, it turned out to be as his confidential secretary. So what I did was read the exhibits that were introduced in evidence, of which there were thousands, and read the testimony that was introduced in evidence and pick out important parts relating to particular defendants because we had 15 defendants on the case. And the judges had a terrible time remembering who was who and what was what. They also had trouble with the German words. There were so many t titles that could not be translated into English. And they would use the German word, and the judges got mixed up as to whether this was a Rechtsanwalt or a Hoch Rechtsanwalt or something. So I went through and made a uh, bibliography of the defendants, stating their prior occupations and the charges against them. And I uh, prepared a dictionary or whatever of the, the German words defining the terms of the titles of these different defendants, which I think made the work much easier for the judges anyway. They were very they were hearing testimony and they wore earphones which were attuned to an interpreter in their language. And the court reporters wore earphones and for instance I had earphones which spoke English except that the translations were so bad sometimes that I pushed one earphone up and did my own translation. Now, in this court, there was a, a great wire recording device in the back room that recorded every word and a photograph, a photo cameras all around taking pictures of everything to show that no one was, one was being abused, I guess. And then we court reporters, there were two banks of us uh, seated at the table. I was with another girl or boy who were taking it in English and then there was a team of Germans next to me. And I, I don't, I, presume in some cases we had some who took French and the interpreters uh, spoke into our earphones in our language which we recorded and which was then compared to the uh, wire recorder for accuracy. I caused a little trouble by doing my own interpreting because some of the interpreters had maybe a high school German or something and were pretty poor and so I, translating from German to English was easy for me because I had a pretty good grasp of English language and I could translate it into English accurately. So one of the reporters came in one evening, he said, you know, I've been trans uh, reviewing your tape and he said there was a lot of stuff in there that I didn't say at all, but it was very accurate. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm sorry, but there were a few places that I just thought needed straightening out. He said, well, they did. And he said, I'm going to use some of your words in the future, which was nice of him. He could imagine. Judge yeah, Brand yes. wrote to the first 187 pages of the judgment, and the other judges picked it. Uh, portions that completed this, uh, a judgment of somewhat over 200 pages. Do you recall were all the uh, defendants found guilty or were no, they, they were, were not. mixed? Some of them were let, let off. One man was let off on account of health, at least one. One was uh, let off because they felt that he tried to ameliorate the dictates of the Nazi regime for the benefit of his clients as much as he dared to without loss of his own life. And uh, 
and then, uh, I think three of them were Rumi's, and I don't quite remember what the reason was for the third, maybe also hell. Uh, one, uh, others were giving sentences, I think there were three life sentences, and the rest were lesser terms. The young attorneys, who were mostly Jewish, were very outraged at the decision because they felt it was too gentle. But that was the usual feeling of the attorneys. They all wanted death sentences regardless of whether it had to. Then, then I uh, continued to assign the testimony to the different defendants as just about a one line or two line paragraph stating what they were charged with or what they had done and how it related to their charges. And I kept that up until Judge Brand got ready to write the opinion, at which time they hired two men to take my place. I told you it was the story of my life, didn't I? And uh, those men never got around to doing any work for some reason or other. They were so busy black marketing and everything that they didn't have time. And every week or so, they'd drop in, well, Hattie, you must tell us what we're supposed to do. 